All right, Joker geeks, buckle up for a laugh riot. So, there was this retired army general, General Harrison, who traded in his battlefield for a battlefield of another kind, his living room. Now, retirement wasn't exactly peaceful for the general. You see, he developed a very specific post-victory ritual, a drunken toast to another successful mission accomplished, delivered with a flourish and a concerning amount of whiskey. The problem wasn't the toast itself, although the neighbors might have disagreed, especially considering the general's preferred beverage was a bottle of scotch the size of a small child. It was the victory dance that followed. Picture this, a full-blown salute that would make a drill sergeant weep with nostalgia, a triumphant yell that could shatter glass, and probably did, judging by the growing collection of missing wine glasses in the general's cabinet. And then, thump. But don't worry, folks. This wasn't some slapstick routine where the general careened headfirst down the stairs or got mysteriously tackled by the living room rug. No, the climax of this bizarre ritual was even more unique. The general, fueled by the fumes of victory and probably a bit too much scotch, would then proceed to remove his left boot with the grace of a drunken baby giraffe. He'd hold it aloft for a dramatic moment, like a gladiator presenting his weapon to the crowd, except the crowd in this case was a bunch of sleep-deprived neighbors hiding under their pillows. Then, with a flourish that would make a bad magician cringe, he wouldn't throw the boot. He'd gently, or at least with the intention of gentleness, place it on the floor with a resounding thump. Of course, considering the general's current state of inebriation, gentle often translated to dropping it from a concerning height. He'd then repeat the entire process with his right boot, all the while muttering a slurred version of his victory toast. Another glorious mission accomplished. Yes, and yet another one for the history books. Well, as days went by, walls are thin, you know, so the neighbors started to complain one day, so Mrs. Smith, the smallest woman just beneath him, went to have a small talk with him. So she knocked on the door, and by the third knock, the general opened the door. Well, good day there, Mr. Harrison. How are you? Good day there, Mrs. Smith. I'm good, and you? How may I help you? Well, General, sir, I thank you for all your services to the country for so long, and it can really take a toll on someone. Well, it's a pleasure, ma'am, and it really and truly does. But, sir, can you please kindly not slam your boots down in the middle of the night once you return home on the weekends? It's waking us and our kids up. Oh, I didn't know that. In fact, I did not realize of this racket. I am truly sorry for waking all of you up like that. How stupid of me. It won't happen again. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you for understanding. So, a fragile peace settled over the building. Mrs. Smith's diplomacy, bless her heart, seemed to have done the trick. The general, bless his oblivious soul, probably thought he'd aced his neighbor relations exam. The next morning, the clock on the wall flickers a faint 2 chaos a.m. The general stumbles through the door, triumphant but slightly disheveled. Medals jingle out of sync with his lopsided gait. He throws his hat onto the nearest surface, miraculously missing the porcelain bird, again, and lets out a triumphant but slightly slurred. Well, hey, yeah. Uh, there you go. Another successful mission accomplished. He stumbles towards the couch, but a mischievous glint enters his eye. Removing his left boot and throwing it on the floor with a thump, he then hovers his hands on his right boot, but then he remembers a Mrs. Smith standing in front of him, talking about this exact same thing. Her words echo in his head, a nagging voice of reason amidst the whiskey fumes. Uh-oh. Well, that is what they talked about. No more boot stomping. Right, gotta keep the peace treaty. Operating silent boot drop, commence. With those words, he fell back on the couch with a dramatic sigh. But his mission was not accomplished. He needed that right boot to come off. He leans over, gingerly reaching for his left boot. His face contorts in concentration, clearly a battle between his desire for silence 
and the stubbornness of the laces. Finally, with a triumphant grunt, he frees the boot and putted the boot on the floor like it is a bomb that is about to explode, and you need to give it special treatment to not explode your guts. And then he passed out, letting the whiskey taking over. An hour later, a banging on the door woke the general from a restless sleep. He grumbled, shuffled to the door, and flung it open. And there they stood, his entire building's worth of sleep-deprived neighbors, led by Mr. McLaren in a hilariously crumpled nightgown. Sir, can you please just slam the other boot already so we can all get some sleep? <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>